Okay, here we are with Hot Air Balloon Buoyancy Bonanza. Yes, yes, yes. And in this lecture, I am going to be going over what calculations are required to um, in, uh, measure whether or not your balloon that we're going to construct in lab will, in fact, fly or not. So this um, worksheet is nothing more than a carbon copy of your data page of your lab that you were handed out today or will be handed out soon. So I put in some data that you're going to gather eventually from your lab and I am going to walk you through the calculations. Now of course we don't have these values yet but by going through these we'll be able to understand the lab a little better. Okay, And it's a required question that we'll see on our gas law test. So it encompasses a lot of the things you've learned already and of course embodies the Archimedes principle. Okay, especially the density and the density uh, uses. Okay, any case, let's get started. And again, the idea here is that I'm giving you some numbers that we'll be measuring in lab and we're going to see how we actually come up with a result that tells us if in fact a uh, our balloon will fly. So continue, let's go on. So let me get some nice ink here. I'm going to go with the blue. All right, so I've got my mass of my balloon, I've got my volume, and molecular mass of air is blank. Temperature of the cool air balloon, classroom atmospheric pressure. Okay, a lot of different things given here, and it probably makes no sense to you why you need them or have them. Okay, well, if you look down uh, on your sheet, you have, you have uh, a cool air balloon and a hot air balloon. Now, I made this word balloon as a theoretical. What I mean by that is you have two balloons. I'm not sure what that is. But you have two balloons. You have the cold air balloon, which is really what I mean is the air that would have taken the space if the hot air balloon wasn't there. So we have one real balloon. Okay? And here it is. This hot air balloon is the air inside your actual balloon. Okay, this cold air balloon, I say, and I say that with um, these little things called apostrophes, I guess, asterisks, whatever you want to call them, is not really a balloon. It represents the air that was pushed out by the hot air balloon. So really when I say cool air balloon, I'm talking about the atmospheric air, the, the, the ambient air that the hot air is displacing. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is figure out the weight of the balloon um, and also the buoyant force. Now we learned the buoyant force, Archimedes principle, is nothing more than the mass of the displaced air. So we need a mass of air. Now we can't put the air that was being displaced by the hot air balloon on a scale. And that's our problem. We cannot mass out hot air or cold air, but I need to know the mass of this air. Well, I know density is equal to mass over volume. We're going to know the volume of the displaced air, the cold air, because that's going to be the same volume as our balloon. And if we can figure out the density, okay, then we can what? Figure out the mass. And if we know the mass of my cold air that's being displaced, I know the buoyant force. If I know the buoyant force, I can evaluate whether my balloon can sink or fly. Now, besides the buoyant force, we need to know, okay, the weight. Oops, not that. The weight of the balloon pushing down. Now, the weight of the balloon is dependent upon, well, two things. Number one, the mass of the tissue paper, which we have above. That's what this is, the mass of the tissue paper. Okay, and we're going to add that mass to the mass of the hot air. How do you mass hot air? Right, the total mass of the balloon, that's the total weight pushing down, okay, is equal to the mass of the tissue paper plus the mass of the hot air. How do I mass out the hot air? So the weight pushing down is the air that's hot plus 
the what? Well, plus the tissue paper. Tissue paper is easy. We're going to push out, fold up our tissue paper and mass it out. That's the value I gave you. Okay, so this is easy. How do we, get, how do we mass out hot air? Well, same thing. We know the volume of our hot air balloon. We're going to calculate for that. We're going to figure out how we get up volume. That's when you make your balloons, we're going to figure out the volume. We can calculate density, and from that, we can determine the mass. And then we're well on our way. There's a weight pushing down, and our buoyant force is the mass of the cold air. So inevitably, our sticking factor or the limiting factor in all of this, okay, is the hot air and the cold air mass. Once we have those masses, which we have to get through density, we can evaluate our two forces and see which one's bigger, whether the buoyant force upward is bigger than the weight pushing down. Okay, so let's get rid of some stuff to clean this up. Okay, so that's where we're headed. Now, how in the heck, if my limiting factor okay, is based on my masses, I need density. I can't put hot and cold air on a scale, so I need density. Well, my friends in chemistry, didn't we figure out what density was? Okay, we figured out that density is equal to mass over volume, but through PV equals nRT, we were able to manipulate our equation, if you remember, and I'm not going to do that here, I've already done that once before, okay, to get um, molecular mass is equal to DRT, dirt over P, and we also manipulate this again to get density is equal to PM over RT. Okay, so we're not really going to use this equation, but essentially it's the same thing. Okay, so that's our equation right here. We got this from deriving it through PV equals nRT. So we're going to get the density, okay, of the hot and cold air that helps us get this mass of both hot and cold air that helps us get the weight and the buoyant force, right, the buoyant force is from the cold air, the weight in part is due to the hot air, okay? But we need the molecular mass, the mass per one mole. We know the temperature of the system, we know the pressure, we have to come up with the molecular mass. Okay, that's what we're doing right now. So, molecular mass of air. How do we know the grams per mole? Air is not, okay, a compound. It's a mixture. <coughs> Remember that? I'm a, oh, okay, it's a pocket oxygen. It's a homogeneous mixture of mostly O2 and N2. Now, how do we calculate it? Well, we can make some basic uh, estimations. We can say that 80%, about, it's probably a little less, it definitely is, 80% of all the air is nitrogen. And 20% of all the air, about, there's a little bit less than that, is oxygen. And from those estimations, we get a pretty good result. So we're not really concerned. So, I'm going to take 80% of the molecular mass of nitrogen. So we know that from the periodic table, a one mole of nitrogen is uh, 14, and because there's two of them, we get 28 grams. So I'm going to take 0.8 times 28. Okay, and I'm going to write this somewhere else so we have the room for it. So I'm going to change my inks because I can, and I'll do it down here. So I'm going to take 0.8 times uh, 28, which is the grams per mole. I'm trying to find the molecular mass. The molecular mass, fancy M here, okay, is grams per mole. That's the converting factor, right? That's if I'm going from, hey, if I have water, uh, water is 18 grams per mole because you have two H's. That's one plus one, and each oxygen is 16 per box. We've dealt with this ad nauseum, so I'm done talking about it. So I'm going to take 0.8 times 28, put that in your calculator, so 80% of 28, and you come up with 22.4, and don't jump out of your seats, it's just totally uh, uh, lucky that we get that number, so that doesn't mean anything. So 22.4, it's not liters, that's just the grams of 80% of 28. Then I'm going to take 20% of what? 0.2 times, well, oxygen's molecular mass is 32, right? 16 times 2. And you're doing 20% of 32, so 0.2 times 32. 
and you get 6.4. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two. And what you get is 28.8 grams per mole. So what I just did was I found basically the mean average molecular mass of the air. That was in a problem, okay, in our density ditto that we did together. So there it is. And that's not going to change. So all your other dittos are just going to be 28. Your worksheets are 28.8 grams per mole. All we did is took in the what? the relative percentages of the grams per moles of these two gases, which is the highest amount in our atmosphere to get that. Okay, and that's going to be constant throughout this, this lab and of course um, through any worksheet that I give you that asks for that, but you should be able to come up with that. Okay, all right, moving on. Why do we need the molecular mass? Well, because I need to understand my density. I got to get my density I know the volume to get my masses. My masses are the missing link, so to speak, of this class, of this whole lab. Okay, so um, density is equal to PM over RT. Now, I have moles here, and we can do that for fun. We know PV equals NRT. It's not really necessary that we actually get moles, but I'm going to show you something. So N is equal to PV over RT. So moles of air. Okay. Well, I know the pressure. Classroom atmospheric pressure is 1.03. We're going to keep that in ATM. I know the volume of my balloon. We're going to have to calculate this, but I have 235. Okay. I have my universal gas constant, which includes atmosphere liters. That's 0 0.08206 atmospheres, uh, liters, mole kelvins. And, of course, I'm going to times that by my temperature, uh, which is given to me in degrees. So this is cooled air, so I have to make sure I get that right. Four degrees Celsius. So 273 plus 4, 277. Uh, yeah, I can do that. Okay, let's go find that. All right, I'll change my inks. Okay, and when I do this, I get 10.648. So 10.6, um, looking at two sig figs, so 10, 11. About 11, but I'll just keep three so we can compare better, okay? So 10.6 moles. Get rid of some of these things here that we are we were using. Okay, so how many moles was 10.6? 10, 10 that's the moles of the cold air that's being displaced. The cold air. I call it the cold air balloon, but this is the displaced air. All right. Now, Let's get to what we really need to do here is find the density. That gets us the what? The mass. Okay, so pressure is 1.03 atms. That's, that's in the atmosphere of that day. It's going to change daily. The molecular mass, fancy M, pinky up, is 28.8 grams per mole. That's where we got it from, using the percentages of nitrogen and oxygen. Okay, my universal gas constant, considering atmospheres, is 0 0.08206 uh, atmospheres liters, mole kelvins, and my temperature of the cold air is still 277. Let's go find that density. Uh, that's Kelvin, of course. Okay, so what I get, putting in my calculator, I get about one point. 305. Now, what's our units? Well, atmospheres cancel. Okay. Moles cancel. Kelvins cancel. And you're left with grams per liter. That's a unit of gas. Gases are normally given in grams per liter because they're really less dense. Grams per milliliter is for usually for fluids and our solids, but grams per liters is what we use 
for gases because they're so much lower. So that's our value for the density of the cold air. Okay. Now, this density is going to help me get the mass of my warm air, which is going to contribute to the weight pushing down once we add it to the tissue paper. So that's why we did that. It's important you understand why we did that. Okay, moving on. Moles of the hot air balloon. This is the actual balloon with hot air in it. So, of course, N is still equal to PV over RT. And the pressure is going to be the same in the hot air balloon as the cold air because it's an open air balloon. Okay, volume, okay, of air at a certain temperature is not going to be constant. It's going to flow out. So what's going to change is the moles. Because it's an open-ended balloon, as you heat your balloon, air becomes, I hate to say it, less dense, and it's going to, um, molecules are going to push out as the volume expands. Okay, so we're going to lose some gas particles. And the ones that are left can overcome um, by going faster. This produces the same pressure inside. So the pressure stays the same even though we lost some gas particles because their temperature increases. And that should make some sense. So the pressure is 0.03 atmospheres, the same as the air that's being displaced because it's still opened. Okay, the volume, all right, is still the same. Um, same balloon. The, balloon, the hot air displaces the same amount of air, so that's 235. Easy enough. Okay, and the R, of course, we're going to use 0.08, 206, uh, ATM liter, mole kelvins. You know these units by heart if you've been following along. Now the temperature is the only thing different. Outside the cold air was, uh, was going to be um, 4 degrees uh, Celsius or 277. Now it's 77. So 273 plus 7. Okay. And you get 350. Or as we say in you know, off river head, 350 Kelvin. Okay. Moving on. Let's find that answer. Okay. So in the calculator, I get 8.4 okay, moles. And that should make sense. Uh, look at our units. Atmospheres go. Uh, atmospheres go. Liters go. Everything goes but 1 over 1 over mole, which gives us moles. So that's 8.4. Okay, more moles. Uh, let's look at that for a second. 8.4 moles. Oh, that didn't work out too well. 8.4 8 moles. Okay right here compared to 10.6 moles. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. The moles decreased. Why? Because as temperature increases, the molecules left. Okay, but that's, that's just nice to talk about, but doesn't really help us come up with the answer. So let's continue. Okay, so density is equal to PM over RT. And for speed purposes, I'm not going to put on all these units anymore. But the, we know that pressure stays the same for reasons I explained. Okay, I can't help but write the units. The molecular mass stays the same. It's the average mass per mole. That does nothing to do with pressure or temperature. Okay, and the R constant is 0 0.08206 atm liter mole kelvin. And of course, we're left with a temperature. Okay, now is 350 Kelvin. Let's go find that number. Okay, I get 1.03. Okay, as my density, and of course, the unit is going to be the same as before. Kelvin's cancel, and it's grams per liter. Okay, that's an important value. Notice the density did what? The density decreased as I heated it. It was 1.305. That's the cold air I displaced. When I heated it to 77 Celsius, it became 1.03. We made the air in the balloon lighter. So therefore, the weight decreased, hopefully enough, so that the buoyant force can lift it. 
Okay, now, here's what we need to do now. We need to find our most important values here, okay, are our density of cold air. Where is, where are you? There you are, density of cold air. Okay, 1.305. Now, let's go find the mass of the cold air. Okay, well, density is equal to mass over volume. Then mass is equal to density times volume, right? Just solving for m. V goes to the top. So density is 1.305. That's grams per liter times the volume. What's the volume of my balloon? Well, remember the volume of the balloon is the volume of air that's being pushed out. So the volume is 235 liters. 235 liters. Let's go find that value. Okay, well I found that to be equal to 306.6 or around to 307 grams. Liters will cancel. Ah, so now we've got the mass of the cold air being displaced. What is this? What is the mass of the cold air displaced? I wanna, what is this? This is very important. Yes, for those that said buoyant force, it's the buoyant force. Now we know really that's times kilogram, uh, times uh, 10, or the, the um, acceleration due to gravity to get newtons, but we're gonna, we can know that it just cancels off. So this is the buoyant force. Yes, party people, that's the what? Force or the mass that can be moved up by gravity in that direction. That's the buoyant force, the mass of the displaced air. That's Archimedes' principle. Let's do the mass of the what? Uh, hot air. That's part of the weight, part of the weight. Density is mass over volume. Mass is equal to density times volume, so therefore, um, Density for the cold air right here is 1.03, 1.03 grams over liter times total volume. Notice liters will cancel. Let's go find that value. Okay, that's going to be 242.05 grams. We'll just go to 242 here. Grams. Now, my friends, that is the weight. Now, you may say, oh my gosh, it's definitely going to float because the buoyant force is 307 and the weight pushing down is 242. Hold on to your ponies for a second. The total weight of the balloon is the mass of the hot air plus the tissue paper. So this weight here is 242 plus the tissue paper. The total weight of your balloon is the air inside plus the tissue paper which was 45.3. That's the entire weight. Let's go find that number. So plus 45.3, and I'm just going to get a, a, a nice round number, and, and, we just, uh, and I get this added to each other, gives me a total weight to be 287 grams. Yes, I can multiply this by, convert this to kilogram and times by 10, but you get the same result. So we're just canceling off the, the, um, the gravity factor for newtons. But the bottom line is, my weight pushing down is 287. The buoyant force pushing up is 307. Does this float? And you would say, yes. This does float. There's enough buoyant force to support the 287. Or the balloon had enough of what? huge enough volume to create a buoyant force big enough to make it float. Or you could say that the heating the air in the balloon made it light enough. This number was light enough for it to work. Many different factors here. Bottom line is the buoyant force is greater than the weight of the entire balloon. So it does. What's carrying capacity? Well, carrying capacity is basically a number that can tell me if it does float or not and how much it can carry, theoretically. So uh, what you do is you take your buoyant force minus the weight. So when we do that, okay, we'll do 307 minus 287. You notice you can get a positive number. 
okay? And when I do that, minus 287, I get a positive 20 grams. Positive 20 means that this can lift, lift itself and 20 grams, something we need to know. If it was a negative carrying capacity, meaning your buoyant force, okay, was smaller than your weight, then it means that you need to lose that much pounds to fly. So this flies because the carrying capacity is plus 20. Again, carrying capacity, CC is the buoyant force minus the weight. And a positive carrying capacity means this works. So what from now on, flip this over 11 times and do the other side at your earliest inconvenience. Um, while you do that, or maybe you, you're doing this after, you have to fill out that form I'm going to give you. It shouldn't be too many questions, although I haven't made it. Good luck. Have a great weekend.